So I have a bunch of slabs I need to start flattening and I need to get my router table, router sled jig set up. So I thought I'd do a video on that because I haven't seen anybody make one quite like I made mine and I think it's a pretty good design and I think it's quite a bit better than some of the manufactured ones like Woodpecker Tool Makes and a few other name brand ones. Um, I'll explain why I don't like those after I get mine set up. And I don't really have a ton of money into this and I think it gets a, a pretty accurate and, and really good result. So it all starts with a good level sturdy table. The finished product is only going to be as good as, as how flat your table is and how accurate you set it up. This is like my welding fab table. It's a one inch plate. It's not flat by like a machinist standards, but it's definitely flat enough for everything I do and what this video is about. So you don't need a table like this. It just, this works out really well for me. You can make one out of wood and plywood, but you just gotta make sure you really reinforce it and get it as flat as possible. But let me start getting my rails set up and I'll show you. So I used linear rails for the uh, sliding system. It's like a bearing block and then there's bearings in there and then it rolls on this chrome plated, uh, these chrome plated rails. So it goes this way and this way back and forth. So a bunch of people I've seen have used these before and they're pretty cheap. You can find them on eBay or Amazon. Um, Bunch of people have used these, but I haven't seen anybody reinforce it with steel like this. So I noticed in other people's designs and I was playing with it before I had this set up, there was a lot of deflection in just the rails. So people would have, a lot of people just bolt these rails right to these bearing blocks. So on your router track this way, I definitely noticed a bow, like when you get out to the middle here, and especially out here, I have my anchor point so far away, that's like eight foot from these uh, bolts. There would definitely be a deflection in there. So a lot of people would like bolt these right to the table or on like a two by four. So with this design, it's really, it's really stiff uh, on this two inch tube. I think that's three sixteenths wall and then some rectangle tube. And I think this is a channel. I bolted all my linear rail to so it really it stays super rigid especially when the router's running there's a lot of vibration a lot of movement you're pushing on it it's going through the wood this keeps it really locked together so if you guys have seen any of the manufactured some of the manufactured router sleds a little bit cheaper but not too cheap they're like twelve hundred dollars or something but there's definitely higher end ones but the ones i'm talking about i know for sure like woodpecker tool and a few other brands they have this general design, but they don't use these linear rails. They use like a like a, a V angle track. And then this part of this sled with the uh, with the router on it, it just sits on top of it. And same, I think same with this. I just they sit on top of the rails and it relies you have to keep down pressure. So you you would on their system you'd be able to just pick these off and they would just they would come come right out. I could be wrong, but that's what I noticed. So if you guys plan on buying a router sled, I would definitely look into seeing if it was that kind of system. If it had a, if you have to keep down pressure to keep the uh, the router on the track, I would definitely stay away from that. Uh, in my opinion, that's not a great design, and they're not that cheap either. I think the woodpecker one was like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. 
all in on this homemade setup. Probably maybe $500, four or four or $500, including the router I bought on Marketplace. It's a three horsepower, pretty big DeWalt um, adjustable speed planer or router. Uh, it's been it's been working really good so let me show you guys how i get it leveled and then put a slab on it and show you how it works so before i set the elevation of my rails with these nuts and bolts i get my slab or what i'm what thickness i'm flattening on here first because i have a little bit of adjustment with this router up and down but I don't have a ton, so I get the slab, you know, if I'm flattening a few, two, or I think this is a three inch slab, or was when I cut it. If I'm flattening a few of the same thickness, I get one of them down here, and then I adjust my rails within, you know, an inch or so of the highest point after you can see why we're flattening it. It's really twisted. But I wanna get that pretty close to the tallest point, so I make sure I have enough adjustment because it's a pain to you to keep moving these so I want to lock those in and get them set for a bunch of slabs that I'm doing and then I just use the adjustment on the router to make my passes to get them flat so I got this on here now I'm going to set up a laser and bring this down pretty close to uh, the tallest point of the slab so I got a good height that I like now I'm gonna set both of these nuts to where my laser's right on the bottom of that channel. Then I'm gonna bring it down here when it's over top of these nuts and do the same thing. So my rails are level to the table and the table's level. So once I flatten the top side, that should be perfectly parallel to the table and these two by fours, which is flat to the table. So I get the top side flat and then flip that over flat on these and then do the other side and then both sides should be parallel with each other. I got it shimmed and hot glued. You can kind of see how much we got to take off to get both sides flat. So all I have left to do is hook up my dust collection system. I would highly, highly recommend you have some sort of dust collection system if you're doing this inside. It makes a colossal mess and you it, even with a mask on, it just, you don't wanna do it. Unless you're doing it outside, you gotta have some kind of dust collection system. You can get away with a shop vac, but it fills up really quick. I got mine in the ceiling and then it just shoots outside. It's a real simple three inch intake there with some some bristles to help kind of contain it. Just a, just a simple anything to suck up, especially that fine dust. There's gonna be a handful of bigger chips that make a mess on the table, but nowhere near uh, what it would be without the dust collection system.
So I just finished flattening both sides of this cherry slab. I ended up with like two inches thick. It was two and a half when I started, so lost a half inch between both sides. That's pretty normal after they dry. Some warp more than others, but hopefully this gives somebody some more ideas when building their router sled. Um, this system works real well for me. It probably took me like a half hour to do both sides while filming too, so a little bit less time when I'm not filming, but a half hour, this is probably seven foot long by like 20 inches wide out here, and it kind of tapers. So let me know what you guys think.